Why are you running to be the leader of the Conservative Party? I'm running to be leader of the Conservative Party because I believe that I've got the serious answers to the challenges facing our country. We need to tell hard truths. We need to accept where we've got things wrong. We need to listen to the public. If we do that, then I believe that we can unite, we can change our party, and we can win the next general election. Winning back the votes that we've lost to reform, to Labour and the Lib Dems, and once again, we can deliver for the British people. What do you think we need to do over the coming years to win the next general election, and how will you achieve it? I'm a realist. We have a mountain to climb. Our party needs to change a lot. If we don't, we have no future. But if we do change, if we listen to the public, if we accept where we made mistakes, where we didn't deliver for the public when in office on crucial issues like immigration, the economy and the NHS, if we can do that, if we can unite as a party, a broad church, but one with a common creed, then I firmly believe that we can win again, not in two terms, not in 10 years, but win the next general election. Do you have a longer term vision for the party beyond 2029? I want to breathe new life into this party. I want to attract more members. I want it to be a mass member organisation once again. That means attracting new people of all ages in all parts of the country. I especially want to attract more young members to the party. And I firmly believe that with the right message, if we can create a compelling vision as to why it's in the interests of young people to be conservatives, then we can do that. I want the party to be more democratic, giving a renewed role and respect to members in many different ways, but in particular on the selection of candidates so that members are empowered to choose who their candidates and ultimately their members of parliament are as well. I want to get our fighting machine back into shape so that we never let down candidates and members again. We've got elections around the corner, local government elections, Scottish and Welsh elections, even the general election is only a matter of years away. We can be better. I'm certain that we will be better if we make the right changes in the months ahead. What are the top three policy areas you'll prioritise? And what specific actions will you take in those areas? Look, there are many big challenges facing our country right now. And I want to ensure that we tackle them head on. But I'd start by going back to the things that we stood for in the 2019 general election, where we won that landslide majority we promised a strong economy, a strong NHS, and a strong border. On the economy, taxes have risen too fast as growth has risen too slowly. Of course, we were knocked off by the global economic crisis, by the pandemic. But I want the Conservative Party nonetheless to stand once again for lower taxes, for entrepreneurship, for a small state that backs entrepreneurs and small business people. And I know we can do that. We can grow the economy faster than we have in recent decades. And we do that by building more homes in our cities, by ensuring that we have cheap and reliable energy here in the UK, by cutting subsidies for offshore wind and investing more in nuclear power, by giving our people real skills, not low value degrees, and by helping people off welfare into the dignity of work. On the NHS, we have rightly funded the NHS properly in recent years, but we haven't secured the productivity gains that the service needed. We need to remember that the NHS is a public service, not a religion, and never shirk the difficult decisions to ensure that it delivers good quality services and value for money for the taxpayer. And on our borders, look, in recent years, as in fact throughout my whole adult lifetime, Governments have promised controlled and reduced immigration and a secure border only to do the opposite. We didn't break the cycle of broken promises when we were in government. And that was one of the reasons why ultimately I chose to resign as a minister, because having secured as many reforms to our immigration system as I possibly could, I concluded that I couldn't do as much as was needed. And I refused to be just another minister who broke my promises on immigration. We need to ensure now that the next Conservative government brings down legal migration with a cap set by Parliament at the tens of thousands and that we have a proper policy to ensure that the small boats are stopped and our borders are secured. Only by doing that can we begin to rebuild trust and confidence with the British public.
How would you describe your leadership style and how will you ensure unity and inclusiveness within the party? Look, throughout my time in politics, I've always tried to be a collegiate leader. I've been honoured to serve in the governments of each of the last five Conservative prime ministers. And in every case, I worked with my colleagues, with councillors, with members to get things done and to deliver for the British people. I believe we can do that once again if we unite as a broad church, but one with a common creed. If we listen to our members, to councillors, to the public and ensure we act on their concerns. If we can do that, then we can be the best possible opposition, holding Keir Starmer and the Labour Party to account from day one. How did you first get involved in politics and the Conservative Party? Well, I joined the Conservative Party in 1997, just after we'd suffered another crushing defeat. And back then, there were not many Conservatives in Wolverhampton, where I grew up, and it was deeply unfashionable. But I was drawn to the Conservative Party because I was very sceptical about Tony Blair and his dour technocratic vision for the country. And I was inspired by conservatism and our belief in entrepreneurship, in self-reliance, in the family, in strong defences, and above all, in the nation state. Principles that I've continued to believe in and tried to put into practice in everything that I've done in politics ever since. What did you do before politics and how has it shaped your views? Well, I didn't come from a political family. I learned my politics less from what my parents said than watching what they did. My dad was a gas fitter from Manchester. My mum was a secretary from Liverpool. They founded a small business around our kitchen table in the black country. And my politics came from seeing how they conducted themselves. It was their values of family, of hard work, of self-reliance, and of free enterprise and entrepreneurship that ultimately made me a conservative and has forged everything that I've tried to do since. What would you say is the highlight of your political career? Well, that's a tough one. But I think I'd say the 2019 general election. But we fought that campaign with a tremendous vision for the future of our country. We energised the Conservative Party. Our members were out on the streets fighting to secure that amazing majority. We said that we were going to get Brexit done that we were going to stop Jeremy Corbyn, that threat to our security and prosperity from being prime minister of this country, that we'd secure our borders. And we said we would level up all parts of the country, which enabled us to spread the conservative message to places that had never voted conservative before. I want us to get back to that compelling vision of conservatism and to winning once again in all parts of our country. How has the Conservative Party shaped you as a person? Well, I've been a member of the Conservative Party since I was 16 years of age. The Conservative Party is a family to me, whether that's members, councillors, fellow members of parliament. I've been an association chairman for four years. I fought a marginal seat in the Midlands. I fought a by-election, which thousands of people from across the Conservative Party came to help me win and to defeat UKIP. Then ultimately I was elected. I've been a minister. I've been a cabinet minister. This has been a part of my life for most of my life. I want to ensure that the party gets back together, is united and gets back to winning again because I care about the Conservative Party and want it to succeed for us and for the country. Who is your biggest inspiration? Probably my dad. My dad grew up in a working class background in Manchester and worked in factories in the 60s and the 70s, ultimately setting up his own business in the 80s. And he came to the very strong view that Margaret Thatcher had saved the country from socialism. He'd seen out of control trade unions destroy the businesses that he'd worked in and felt that it was her and her policies, conservatism, that had given him the ability to buy a home of his own, to have the self-confidence to set up a small business and to invest in his future and that of his family. And so it was his values and hard work that have always inspired me in politics and in life. What do you hope members will learn about you during this campaign that they may not already know? Well, I hope that they'll see the Robert Jenrick that they may not have just by watching me on the media or in the chamber. And that's the young lad who grew up in Wolverhampton to working class parents, the teenager who was the first in his family to go to university, the young man who was drawn into politics by the values and conservative principles that I'd learned from my parents, watching them found their small business. And more recently, the politician who 
having served in government, has seen firsthand that the British political system is simply not working for the British people and is now setting out to try to change our politics so that it finally delivers on the big questions facing our country, whether that is securing our borders, getting growth going again in our economy, or ensuring that we have a small state that works, not a big state that fails. What do you hope to show the public during this leadership campaign? I want the public to see that our party has listened, that we understand their completely legitimate concerns, that they can see that we've learnt from our mistakes, that we are committed to changing, to uniting around our common principles and delivering serious leadership once again on the serious challenges facing our country so that we can regain their trust and respect and to deliver for the public once more. Any other thoughts you'd like to share? Look, we've got to be realists, but we mustn't be defeatist. I firmly believe that if we show the public that we've changed, that we've listened to their concerns on the big issues, whether it is immigration, the economy, or the NHS, then we can win again. Not in 10 years, not in two terms, we can win the next general election.